So in my last video, we said that I have gestational diabetes. And so today, we're gonna take you on a full day of eating. I'm gonna check my blood sugar after every meal. I'm gonna put in a clip of what my fasting glucose was this morning and teach you some more about diabetes. Stand tired. So things to avoid are breads and carbs. I can still eat sausage. Yes. I usually drink orange juice, but it has a lot of carbs in it too, but let's drink a little bit. So what we have here for breakfast, some eggs, sausage, um, potatoes, and then I just got some of these. So I know some residencies actually have you um, do this as a project. They give you a glucometer and then they have you prick your finger and check your blood glucose after two hours of eating and your fasting glucose. And it's just because in America there's such a huge population of diabetics that um, it's good to understand what you're putting your patients through um, when you ask them to check their sugars every day. So um, I'll tell you guys more about carbs and all that stuff later on in the video. So we're back in our room and it is currently 8.30 and so we're going to check our glucose once again at around 10.30. And so our goal is to be under 120 after eating a meal. So in the morning our goal was to be under 95 for a fasting blood glucose level. And so those were that was good. Um, so today for breakfast, you saw that I tried to avoid carbs, and carbs are things like breads, rice, um, pastas, cereal, um, yogurt has some carbs in it, but the things that really raise your blood sugar is like orange juice, it has a lot of sugars in it, um, the little things like jam, ketchup, those things also raise your blood sugar, and those are the things that you want to tell your patients. Um, maybe avoid or eat less of um, the things that aren't considered carbs are basically your other food groups like fats and protein so my eggs was mainly protein sausage is mainly fat those things you can eat more of because it doesn't raise your blood sugar so it's currently 1038 we're gonna check my sugars one more time to see where they are from eating breakfast We're at 70, which means that's really good. So we're going off to eat dim sum now for lunch. It's a little different than what I normally eat in a day just because um, we're over here on the west side and Stan and I are trying to look for new apartments to move into for when residency starts. So I just wanted to show you that when controlling diabetes, you can also eat out. It's not necessarily like you're restrained to home cooking all the time. You just have to make um, some good food choices. So like at lunch, I technically could have ate, eaten like a toast or more bread because my blood sugar was still pretty low. So yeah, just keep those things in mind. We're excited for dim sum.
Okay, we're done eating. So full. So I think the only carby thing that we ate was um, what was that? It's like a, a noodle a with. Mile, turn left to noodle? Yeah. So the only really carby thing we ate was like a shrimp noodle, and then um, probably like the wrappings on the outside has a little bit of carbs in it. But I ate so much, so we'll see how this turns out. Yeah, I mean South Korea is. So it's now 3 o'clock and then we're going to check my blood one more time. mothers with gestational diabetes have a likelihood of developing type 2 diabetes. Um, so it's really sad, but I've also read that a lot of Asians um, tend to get gestational diabetes and I don't know why. We're going through another tunnel. So I think a question that Stan had for me when I was diagnosed was that um, once I deliver, I wouldn't be considered diabetic. So yes, that's true. Gestational diabetes is labeled as gestational diabetes because it only occurs during pregnancy. So once you deliver, once you give birth, then your body should regulate, um, your insulin levels should become normalized, and you should not become insulin resistant anymore. And so as long as I keep a healthy lifestyle, maintain a good, healthy weight, then I shouldn't have diabetes. in an hour so that's um, it should be under 140 since I want to eat popcorn <laughs> but the thing about eating crawfish is it's like it's really um, salty and one of the things that you worry about in third trimester is preeclampsia and eclampsia so you have preeclampsia when your blood pressure goes too high and you're dropping not dropping you're um, losing protein in your urine and if protein builds up you can get seizures and that's when you get preeclampsia so I didn't say this in my last video but my blood pressure has been going up a little bit um, it's been in the 130s so we'll see what it is next time so, yeah. so we're finally back in the hotel and there's one more thing I wanted to address about gestational diabetes that Stan brought up and it's the fact that what it what kind of role it plays in um, the baby you know how it affects the baby because Stan was asking if um, the mom has gestational diabetes and you don't have it anymore after birth then what's the point in controlling your blood sugars and how that would affect the baby and so one of the things that's really dangerous is that uncontrolled um, glucose levels can actually cause stillbirth 
another thing that it can cause is when the baby is born, it will be hypoglycemic. Just because during development um, inside the mom's body, the baby has to um, the baby's pancreas is actually producing a lot of insulin just to regulate the mom's high glucose level. So when it comes out and it doesn't have any more of that glucose, it overproduces insulin and so it will become hypoglycemic. And another effect that can happen to the baby is macrosomia, which means that the baby can be really large and that can cause shoulder dystocia when the mom is trying to have a vaginal delivery. So. Um, and most of the time, if baby's too big, then you would have to induce labor and baby would have to come early, so things like that. So yeah, it's really important to regulate sugars as a gestational diabetic. Um, but also, with patients who have type 2 diabetes, it's important to let them know that high glucose levels can actually affect end organs and cause end, uh, end organ damage, and those all those things can be avoided with just... Um, like proper diet and exercise and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for today and have for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. You guys know I always answer your questions. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.